this has been a ton of fun. We don't go two weeks without the wildest thing coming up that someone's got connected with BLE. And you look at some use cases, maybe don't make sense, but some you go, wow, that's, that's really innovative. That's really good. And we see it just constantly. And the way that Nordic is set up, we, don't run, we would love to go around getting million piece opportunities every day, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, not in the BLE world. Uh, we go around and somebody's selling, he, he's doing a, a thousand here, a thousand there, and next thing you know, they're the next fit. fit. You don't know. We're, we're uh, set up to handle uh, working with people like that, with working with the smaller folks, with the garage folks, and then, and then going right up from there. So I'm going to go over the 52 details. I'm going to talk about the software development tools and support, and I'm going to move at a quick pace so that you all get the chance to use the, the tools that are in front of you, right? That's probably why you're here instead of to hear me talk. Uh, so the part is architected for speed. It's got a 64 megahertz Cortex M4F with the DSP and the floating point functions. You want that so the processor's on the minimum amount of time. Uh, when it's on, it draws 3.3 milliamps, which is amazing for one of those. The embedded flash, multi-segment RAM, there's a multi-layer bus, the radio is 2 megabit per second, 2.4 gigahertz GFSK. Uh, Bluetooth low energy right now works at 1 megabit per second, and that's about to change. Uh, built for power efficiency, the radio and the processor active currents are very low. I'll talk about what, what they are. The processor can be completely offloaded by actually programming the peripherals on the device to connect. Uh, we have a whole series of buses behind the scenes that you can connect them together and make things and do things without involving the processor at all. DMA, low system sleep currents, we go down as low as 300 nanoamps when you're sitting there ready for a reset event to wake you up. If you want to be reset or uh, reset or woke up with, a, uh, with the NFC on your phone, we're drawing 400 nanoamps. That's down in the self-discharge for a coin cell. Okay. Automatic power management, you don't have to do the management on this thing. It does it all for you. Adaptive regulator control, all that's on there. So it's built for power efficiency from the start. Ultra low power, BLE, that's what Nordic is about. Yes, sir? Um, does Nordic BLE match yet? Yes. And yes. how fast does it wake up from <coughs> the sleep state in a mesh network? So the part will wake okay. the, the part is a rather what, so what it'll detect an incoming message and uh, no 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 you can't sleep you can't sleep the radio has to the radio the radio's, radio's on. on the radio's on if you have the radio on that's drawing 5.4 mils that's not a low power motor okay so, so if you're doing BLE mesh you still have to do it in an interval based okay. setup okay right that's the whole secret to getting the low low power 5.4 mils is way, way too much current to be blowing on a regular basis, especially out of a coin cell. Uh, the CPU and the memory on this thing, as of yesterday, or wait, as of today, today. no wait, let me rephrase it, as of yesterday, this was our flagship part. As of today, it's been, its place as the flagship has been taken over by the new part we announced, the Graviton, that I'll mention in just a moment. But since you're using this part on those boards right now, and this, the new part will be readily available for almost a year, we'll focus on this one. So a 215 core mark, 58 microamps per megahertz when running from flash, or, or 51 when running from RAM. 512 of flash, 64K of RAM. All the normal interfaces, SPI, I2C, UART, I2S, pulse uh, density modulation for the uh, digital microphone, Eight channels of 12-bit, 200 kilosample per second ADC, programmable gain on it. Three four-channel PWMs. If you need a fourth one, we can make it with the uh, programmable peripheral interconnect. Uh, low power inter uh, analog comparators, a quadrature decoder for uh, motion detection. 32 configurable, remappable op GPIO. All the, just about all of the digital functions on the device or short of the crystal and the power, those in the grounds, those kind of things. All of them can be remapped to any other pin on the device. So if you need them all to come in on the left and go out on the right, we can do that. Uh, very, very capable for fixing screw-ups, especially when you make a layout mistake. 
The PPI I mentioned, DMA support, and we do the standard ARM M4F uh, serial wire debug, right? Uh, if, I'm sure everybody in here knows it, right? About a decade ago, ARM took over the embedded world. It's, it's already done, the, the war was fought. Uh, if you go off and look at an embedded design, the first thing is ARM. If you don't want to do ARM, you need a, you need a reason. So there are some reasons, but, but ARM is it. So we are ARM M4F, which is a mainstream, nice processor. Yes? Do you know whether the M4F has the caches necessary to run a Linux kernel on the, that ARM chip? I'm pretty sure people are running Linux on the, on the ARM M4F. We don't have it running specifically. We don't support it on ours. Okay. Uh, we do do um, uh, Java. There is a Java uh, engine that will run on our part. Uh, radio performance here, multi-protocol 2.4 gigahertz. What's multi-protocol mean? It means we do BLE, we do our uh, proprietary pro protocols, ESB and Gazelle. If you want just a low overhead way to connect together a couple of things, those are the way to do it, and ANT. ANT is the, is the wireless connection scheme that they use for a lot of athletic type equipment. Um, what's the company? Dynastream and Garmin, Garmin are the ones that uh, own that. Uh, ANT is natively mesh. Uh, BLE is not natively mesh yet. Uh, like you mentioned with mesh, we have our open mesh proprietary solution for doing mesh. When the Bluetooth SIG finally comes out with their uh, approved solution, you would be able to upgrade our mesh to their mesh if you want. It's got an on-chip ballon with a single wire antenna, 50 ohm antenna connection coming out, so your, your uh, RF side design is a lot easier. And you have the ballon inside the park. We support up to 2 megabit per second data rate, 96, minus 96 dB receiver sensitivity. We can go from minus 20 to plus 4 on the transmitter output in 4 dB steps. So you can tune it all the way down essentially to whisper mode or go up to plus 4 dB. With those specs on that part, it's a uh, F-style antenna on that PCB, a PCB antenna. In open space out in my field down in Florida, I've gotten 276 meters uh, where I could do a consistent connect BLE connection. So that was a consistent bi-directional connection at 276 meters. Your mileage will vary. <laughs> 42 dB MSL activity, the peak current on the transmitter, 5.3 mils, the peak current at plus 4, 7.5 receiver at 5.4, those things are on very tiny amounts of time. That's what BLE is all about. Right? 1 dB resolution for the received signal strength, and that's on all the time. You get, that, you get that all the time. Very fast, 40 microsecond receiver and transmitter startup. Touch to pair with NFC. Now, the NRF52, all our parts right now, so which we only have the one, uh, support uh, touch to pair with NFC, so we do uh, uh, A type uh, tag support. It's a 13 megahertz uh, frequency on there. You're actually not sending anything out over the little coil, you actually energize the coil. And on our side, all we do is vary the load so that you see, the, you see it back at your phone. Uh, so we supported, we supported touch to pair up till now. Uh, which is extremely cool. If you ever, you ever get a Bluetooth device and you try to pair it together, it's a pain to scan for it and enter the code. Even for someone that knows what they're doing, it's not a good experience. What is a good experience is you come up and you go, touch, it says, do you want to pair? And you go, yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good experience. Right? The uh, uh, Apple folks are dragging their feet a little bit on the NFC stuff, so Android supports all that. Uh, they, it also supports the uh, NFC capabilities to do uh, uh, so we can send out a URL. So I can take my Android phone with the NFC on, it's not running anything, and I go up to it and touch it and it takes me to a URL. So, all right, that's cool enough, but let's say instead I have a Coke machine and it's got a spot on it that says touch phone here. I touch my phone to it and instead of just taking me to a URL, the URL has a JavaScript that downloads and has the app for the machine. I say connect, and I, and I see the whole app is on there. So completely appless. No one has to jump through a hoop to go off and get an app, because you know they're 
The device in their pocket is cloud enabled. Proximity detection, we could wake, it only costs 100 nanoamps to wake on the field. And now we're adding in uh, payment in our, next, uh, in our next NFC stack. So we'll have payments available. You'll be able to take our parts and, and do payments. Fully automated power management, you get, I'll jump through this real quickly. You got two power modes, on and off. Everything else is managed by the part. Turning the peripherals on and off, selecting the, the power for, for what piece, all that's done by the part itself. We have a supply voltage range between 1.7 and 3.6, so it's optimized to run on a coin cell. Three volts on a coin cell. Running at 1.7 doesn't save you any power if we're running it at 3.6, so it's optimized to run at three. Uh, we, have a, we have fully automated uh, regulator system and our DC to DC converters. We also have an internal 64 megahertz internal oscillator. In microprocessor time, it takes ages for the crystal to wake up. So we can start up with an internal oscillator and get started doing your setup code until we hit the point where it has to turn on the, and finally get the crystal up and running. 300 nanoamps at 3 volts in off mode. 0.78 if you've got all 64K of RAM retained on the, on the part. Just over 2 microamps in 3 volt in on mode with the retention and wake on, on uh, RTC. So we've got the internal clock running, right? We can wake up by, at a time. We've got all of the RAM retained and we're ready to start up and do whatever you want, whenever you want, at 2 microamps. Yes? Can you wake on your near field? Yes. Okay. It all it costs is 100 nanoamps. Cool. Uh, another question? Hmm? Uh, the license, if I buy your part, do I get your stack or is there a no fee? There's no fee. No fee for any of our, any of our we call them soft devices. Uh -huh. There's no fee. And I'll cover more of the stack in just okay. a minute. Uh, the clocking, I mentioned we have the high frequency clock options, the crystal oscillator. We have the low frequency clock options. You can put on a 32 kilohertz clock, but we also have an uh, internal oscillator that meets BLE specs. If you want to save the cost of the oscillator, you take that off and it'll run BLE. Uh, it costs you 1 or 2% in terms of power because it has to turn the thing back on. These are the package options. It comes in a 6x6 millimeter. That's what's on the board right here, 48 pins. It comes in a 53 ball chip scale package, 3 by 3.2 millimeters by 0.4 millimeters. We have people putting them on credit cards, the thin ones, the ones that are all bendy with the battery and, the, and everything on there. It's amazing. So you can fit, these are the, uh, this is the external bill of materials over here, but you can fit the entire uh, PCB, the entire reference design in less than 8 by 9 millimeters. And actually, I've seen it done in more like 6 by 8, closer to 6 by 8. It's just phenomenal. Um, some, we also have people that do uh, modules that we'll talk, I'll talk about in a second. But the modules uh, package all this together onto a, onto a thing that you just lay on your, on your board. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Our new flagship part, as of today, is the Graviton. The Graviton has the same uh, 64 megahertz ARM Cortex M4F in it, the same, same basic radio, with the exception that it will now support uh, 802.15.4. We will be coming out with a thread stack. So if you want to do Google Thread and home automation in that side, we're going to have that capability. We will also support Bluetooth long range, we have uh, a 9 dB uh, power amplifier on the output side, and then we can take the speeds down to half a megahertz, half a megabit, a quarter of a <laughs> megabit, an eighth of a megabit, so that the range is, so we're expecting well over a kilometer for, uh, for long range on Bluetooth. So same sensitivity over here. Uh, quad speed spy and high speed spy, a full speed USB device port on there, a uh, full up uh, crypto coprocessor on there, and we're also taking the power supply range up to the 5 volt range. So you'll be able to hook it up along other 5 volt parts rather than just three. Right now, 7.7 .7 mil millimeters. There's more on that today. The press release just went out today. We're expecting production in late By the end of next year. Yeah. End of next year. Um, I should have my initial. 
uh, development kit in my hand when I get home on Friday. Uh, the soft device is coming out. The whole idea is this part, the, the, the quark part, the part I've been talking about, is completely 4.2 uh, compliant, and it's, it's nearly completely Bluetooth 5.0 compliant, with the exception of long range. This part is completely 5.0 compliant. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, it looks like that foil isn't in your... No, that foil isn't, because this just came out today. Okay. Today. So if you, if you get on the Nordic site, or uh, um, you look, for, look up the press release on, on that number, uh, it'll come up today. It was just today it was announced. So I stuck it in there as an extra added bonus. Cool. Thanks. The software development on these things, we have our, our stacks, and I cut this down to the single stack that we use on the 52 right now. The S132, we call it a soft device. It's a very clean software model. You take the hex file stack and drop it on there. There are no runtime dependencies. It's completely event driven. It runs in supervisory mode, read interrupt mode. On the M4F, interrupts can interrupt interrupts. <laughs> so, which sounds terrible until you're writing a stack like this and you want to run alongside somebody else's application type software. So their application software, as long as they stay out of these tiny few things, right, uh, this, this level of interrupt priority and uh, this timer, as long as you leave those things alone, the stack runs side by side. And the stack will notify you when it's about to run, notify you when you have time to go back. There's even more things that are being done in the newer stacks. So we have support for secure over-the-air device firmware update. Uh, it's, it's now completely secure. We can support concurrent operation as a central, a peripheral, an advertiser, or an observer. Uh, in the newest one, and, and the, the BLE, BLE 4.2 says that the central needs to connect to eight peripherals. And you need to be a, when you're a peripheral, you can be a single peripheral. Most of our competitors struggle to get to eight. Our next stack will allow as many as 20 connections. If you're a central, you'll be able to connect to as many as 16. We're going to test the 16 peripherals. <coughs> and then as a peripheral, you'll be able to do four peripherals simultaneously with the stack, as in addition to all these things. So the advertiser is a beacon. Right, so all, I, I have beacons all over the place here. Long variable MTU size, data packet length extension, says maximum 800 kilobits per second today. Right? I can hook up today and I can demonstrate 768 kilobits per second data transfer rate at Bluetooth 4.2. When the 5.0 comes out and bumps it to the 2 megabits, it'll be 1.5 megabits per second. They're also thinking about doing, the, the, the plan is to do a kind of an audio profile. Anybody get it? Get it? Bluetooth Classic is dead. Right? It will be dead. The code size is 124. Uh, we also have the one with AMP operation. Oh, and the soft devices support concurrent operation with the ESB and Gazelle proprietary protocols. So you can do all those at the same time. A lot of folks will hook up a, a network of devices, and since they're connecting 52s and 52s, they'll just use proprietary because they don't need to use VLE. And then whoever's the, the central, the, the one in the center of the star, uh, he'll end up being the VLE guy for connecting to the phone. So there's lots of possibilities, lots of ways to or organize um, uh, sensor networks. Um, talk more about the development stuff. You have the, uh, the single board development kit there. The uh, pinout on the top is Arduino Uno Shield compatible. We have a debug, out connect oops, a debug out connector on there for debugging your target board. We use the, uh, we, we, we love the tag connect cables, the tiny little six pin stuff, right? Those are wonderful because it's zero cost on your target board. Uh, the cable's not zero cost, it's like 39 bucks. But so is the development kit, it's 39 bucks if you need to buy more of these things. Complete I.O. and peripheral access, and it also has ARM embed support. And I'll mention the ARM embed uh, when I get to the end of this. Our SDK, which hopefully everybody downloaded, right? those have 
all the peripheral libraries, all of the application examples, the over-the-air DFU, um, BLE central, BLE peripheral, combinations, the, pr the proprietary uh, protocols, NFC, all those things are on there. And if you jump in, uh, what you're going to see when we go through the, uh, through the lab is when you jump inside there and it says hex, there's a hex folder, you can just take those and drop onto the folder that represents the board and it'll be programmed with all the stuff that it needs to be that thing. Uh, you'll see in the, in the, in the uh, stuff that we're using. We support Kyle, we support IAR. I know a lot of people are GCC fans. If you can get GCC working, you're now an expert. And uh, that's, that's, that's the hoop that you get to jump through. But we support that as well. PC and mobile tools, we have a very wide set of tools for different platforms. Um, control panels, we have sniffers, we have toolboxes, all sorts of stuff that run on your phone. Uh, to be honest, it works better with Android. Uh, I think Android opens up a few more of the APIs so that you can see more of the data than Apple does. But uh, um, we also have a serializer. We have all sorts of great stuff on the development side. We have targeted SDKs in, in addition to our general purpose one. We support HomeKit. We have an IoT uh, uh, SDK where we can push IPv6 addresses down to every one of the nodes. And then having done that, we have the code that will allow you to do end-to-end -end communication, co-op or MQTT, up to the cloud. Uh, I think the only, uh, the only cloud provider we have it done with is Exosite, but it would be easy enough to point it to anybody else. Air fuel for the uh, uh, wireless charging, and then we have our proprietary mesh solution right now. Okay, so we have our proprietary mesh solution, but uh, but as soon as the Bluetooth SIG comes out, with as soon as they ratify it, we will be there within days with that one. And if you were running our mesh, you'd be able to upgrade it to their mesh right over the air. Our reference design, we have the desktop, we have a smart remote that has um, accelerometers, audio, uh, the buttons, IR, everything on it. If you want to grab stuff, that's a great place to grab code and, and design. Uh, beacons, the, the thing about beacons, the thing about any of these here, these last three, they're all the same design. They're all the same reference design. Everything there is the same. If you want to hook in a sensor, you want to hook it to a PC, that's fine, but the, everything in the middle is the same. This beacon could be a central. This beacon could be a peripheral. It's got the part on it. It's got, the, it's got everything that it needs to be that. But it's, it's physically capable of being a beacon, so, so there's your beacon. And we have this solar beacon, which is that. So this right here, if you have a scanner, you can scan for this, this Nordic... Uh, uh, beacon, and you'll find that even with this light, it's sending out the temperature and the pressure once a second with just the light that's hitting that solar panel on the top. And there's 250 microfarad caps that are being charged and allowing it to do that. It's not a super cap on there. So that gives you an idea how little power this takes <laughs> to run. What else could you do to generate that power? Salt. A chemical difference, vibration, right? Just and now, now you have a wireless connection with something like that. So it, it gives you an idea of what's possible. So there's where ultra low power comes in. We also have power is critical. The first thing is ultra low power BLE, right? Power is critical. We have a power profiler kit that you can plug onto the top of the DK, and it will not take the place of the $20,000 power measurement tool, but it's pretty good for doing that. So here's the, up at the top you can see the three transmissions for a beacon going on, and here's each of the beacons going at like 100 milliseconds intervals. And you can stretch this out and get an idea of how much current your device is using as an average, and what the peaks are. This is for doing the air fuel stuff. We also have, we are partnered with a wide number of, of um, module providers. Regato is one of our favorites. Regato has a DK 
uh, development kit that looks almost exactly like ours that replaces the reference design with, with a module on there. Uh, the modules are very cost effective and you don't have to do the RF design. You drop the module onto there and you start programming and going. It's, uh, I, I don't know why more of our small ER customers don't do it. Uh, although we do have a couple of, one customer who's buying several million modules and still has, it's making sense for them. So modules, modules are great. We love people to do we, We're happy to support somebody that uses modules as well as somebody that uses chips. Either way is fine for us. Support and community. We have the Nordic Developer Zone, a forum, wide open forum. You can search those, ask questions, right? That's the normal, normal forum type thing. We have our GitHub repository with a bunch of uh, experimental type stuff that people have worked on. And then our online support center through the MyPage account gives you access to 30 dedicated people over in Norway. And these are not interns, these are not first, first level, second level, third level. These are folks that either do the development or are sitting right next to the people that are doing the development. We depend on these guys over in Norway. And since they're six hours ahead, normally you ask a question today and you get the answer in the morning. So it works out, it works out perfectly. These guys, are, these guys are great. I do want to point out that when you, if you're doing a chip level design, Right. Most folks don't have the top-end RF uh, knowledge that they, that they really need. You can pass your schematic and your layout files through our support portal for, for review. And in an iterative process, we will go through your design and get you up to speed. So it's, the whole idea is that you will pass FCC certification if at all possible. That's the last thing we want to see is FCC certification fail. Once that's done, you can pass your, you can send your design, your prototype to us, and we'll do RF characterization and antenna tuning for you for free. We'll do that for chip designs, and we'll do that for module designs. Now, obviously, we don't have to tune the antennas, but we'll do the RF characterization for you. We'll take a look at things. Yes, sir? Do you need a minimum or quantity? Nope. Uh, nope. No, we have students that, that are clearly aren't going to buy much volume that use these, all these tools. And we're happy to, again, we're happy to help folks who, who like what we have uh, in hopes that someday they may be somewhat associated with somebody who will buy volume. But all these tools Scott just talked about are all available to anyone who, who goes and uh, registers for them uh, for free. Yeah, we're set up, Nordic has a unique support model while the people that Clay and I used to work for are pulling back and don't want to really talk to anybody. Uh, we talk to everybody. That's where the BLE marketplace is. The guy that's in his garage, the few people, the three people, the, the smaller companies, hey, we're, we're happy to go talk to someone who wants to buy 10 million, but, but this market's not that. It's people who, who get a good idea and start, start building it up. And the hardest part isn't building the product, it's getting it sold. So that takes us into the hands-on workshop part. So did everybody get the, the flash drive? I assume everybody has the PDF. As you jump past this last slide, you'll get into the steps, okay, that will, that will step you through doing this. Now I simplified this a little time because, a little bit because we're time constrained, although here it is 7 o'clock, which is like crazy. Uh, so all I'm going to have you do, what I want you to do is see the basic things. These, these, three, these three capabilities pretty much represent 96% of what people do with our parts. So while our parts can be a sniffer, an observer, and, uh, and a central, most people don't use those capabilities. Most people are putting them in the peripheral part. And they either want to have that device send data up from the peripheral, and that's what the heart rate monitor does. It sends data up from the peripheral. Uh, or they want to reach down and they send data down to it. Now the UART will do both, but in this case we're going to use it to send data down to the, uh, to the peripheral. And the last thing that they want to do is some kind of beacon. So this covers 96% of the use cases that we see. And this will give you a chance, along with the tools that are on your phone, 
to actually see these things work. And now we only we only have maybe 15 people in here, so it's not going to be that bad. But you'll have to put your phone right next to the device and then pick out the, the one that's the strongest on there to make sure that you're talking to that device. So let me jump back. Yeah, there we go. So let me jump back to here. All right, you're going to need uh, you need the, the uh, tools installed on your phone that I listed. Uh, you're going to need you're going to need at the very least the hex files in here if you don't have the SDK installed. I wanted you to have the SDK because it shows you all the great stuff that's in there. Go through the examples. There's also a folder that says documentation. When you go in there, there's an index. That index link will take you into our info center and show you that's where the majority of our documentation lies, is in the info center online. Uh, but if you don't want to install uh, the SDK, and all, when you install it, it's just a folder. You can just delete it. It's, it's not installing any tool. The hex files, I la labeled these so it says Beacon app, HRS app, UART app. Now these hex files and the ones that are in that hex folder that you're going to see in the instructions, these are a merged file. So it contains both the soft device and the application code. And with the embed setup, when you drag that file and drop it onto the, uh, onto the folder representing the DK board and the memory in the device, it erases the entire part and then writes the soft device and the application. In a development setup, you would program the soft device on the part and then you would start writing your app code. Bang, 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 bang with Kyle or IAR, GCC, you just start writing, programming, writing, programming, writing, programming, debugging and so on. Embed's not much for debugging, but it's cool to just drop it and go and see the capabilities. Everybody know where they're, what they're doing? Yes? I need those flash drives back when you're done. Clay, did you have anything to say? No. No questions? Let me know if you have problems. Holler. If we're plugging into a USB, do we need to pull the uh, battery uh, tape off the uh, battery? No, don't pull the battery tape off. Okay. That's only for you don't, one, right? You don't, need to, you don't need to pull the battery tape. You don't need to put the mm -hmm. NFC antenna in there. Okay. The, uh, yes, that, of course it's kind of a misnomer that yes. it's an antenna, it's, it's a coil, right? And these are replacing PGA chips? Or? Uh, those are for you to, I don't know what they're for. I, I can't imagine what They're just samples to come with it. What you would do with five them. in there or three in there? very hard to solder. Unless you have a very steady hand, and at my age I do not have a very steady hand for that. So if you don't have your PC, you can look over somebody's shoulder. San Francisco and I had three of them break because somebody bent them over and snapped them. You, you have to go back and, and solder them otherwise. Uh, if I shut off autoplay, um, I, did, I can go to the drive letter that gets yeah. installed? Yeah.
I changed the name on the hex files up there. Okay. The one, the, the, the book no. points to a different one, but this way, the one on the hex there, mm -hmm. you can tell which application that you're doing. Okay. I just gave it a, a name that you could you could see. So I mentioned, I mentioned the NFC, right? So I didn't, you can do this, you can take the NFC, and all I did was take the NFC uh, hex file and drag it, drop it onto the thing, and I put the put this in there. So this this is drawing 400 nanoamps oh, yeah. right now, waiting for me to come along with my Android phone. Uh, Apple doesn't support this part right yet. I have NFC on. There's nothing else going on on my phone, just just the OS. And I do that, and it brings up the, the web page. So the part, you could ship your ship your device with the with the part running, and when the person comes up to configure it, it wakes it up. At 400 nanoamps, store and installed your apps. Um, I've got other NFC scanning stuff installed on my phone and when I tap your app isn't coming up. Should it? Should I start your app first? For NFC? No, for the connecting. For the for the heart rate? Yeah. So you need to scan with it. You, you can't tap it. Okay. There's there's no NFC. None of the examples that I have None here are, them connect with NFC. are NFC. NFC. Okay. All right. I was going to focus just on no, the. Okay. It's okay. It's an interest to me. I, I love I love the connect of then, NFC for smart devices. There is there is a um, there is an example. I can pull up the example and show you where it is. So you can do this exact thing with that with the antenna in there, and that will work. Okay. okay. That, that's okay. I'll, I'll uh, leave that as an exercise. I'll, I'll follow the bouncing cursor here. So it shows up as a drive. What's the end? Yeah, that's right. Scott. Yeah, it opens up a folder. You should, if you don't have autoplay on, you'll have to go look for it in your uh, in Windows Explorer. Is it on? Is the board on? I think so. Is the switch in the on position? Switch is on. And you've got it plugged in? I don't have lights. No lights? That would be a problem. Is that your cable or our cable? Uh, it's your cable. Is that it? Did you hear it? No? Not a blinking light, I guess. No, it's just the... What's the solid green one? Oh, yeah. You want on until it was a reset. Oh, no. Reset. Don't barely blink. Oh, there it was. Oh, there was a that. That's not this one though, right? I actually get a top 10. Oh. That's, 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 that's like LED 5. 
How do you do what? It says the embed method. Right. The steps should show you. The document should show you. Exactly LED one's over here. Right click anywhere. I know what this is. Oh, you just paste the file. Yeah, the drag and drop it. It should do it automatically. Yep. Okay. Uh, I I clicked paste and it looked like it did something, but um, I didn't get the blinking light on my. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we just get a solid. Light. Yeah, LED one something. Well, that's. Well, it'll it'll dip, 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 as it's doing the, the data transfer, but uh, it did do that. It was like right. then, the then, then do a scan. Yeah, yeah but what about the top? I'm not the, seeing that. Uh, that you uh, won't see that file. HRM. You won't see it. The only one I see is actually my computer. You don't want to try, you try. You don't try yours. I you won't see it on there. You, you shouldn't. There's, it's not running a, it's not running a traffic <laughs> over there. Okay. It's, it's kind of emulating this thing so that you see those those pieces. Mm -hmm. But then when you drag and drop, it's telling the device to do a certain thing. But it's there's no fat file system on there that would show that you dropped that X file. Okay, it's, but I mean as far as this scanner. That scanner should see, is that, is the LED one blinking? Yeah. That's just all it. I'll get the reset button. Oh, we should do reset after. Yeah, I did all the beeping on the computer and everything. And okay, it's not for it's, it's not advertising. I'm having the same problem where the LED one's not blinking. Yeah. <coughs> Scott, should you try a different board? I just copied the. Probably not, but let's just so we run through the very first one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Okay. Oh, we're going to switch boards. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that one is not So that's not on? Yeah, I think you have that board. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that <laughs> would be a surprise. It would be. So I, this is the first uh, bad board I've seen in almost two years. So I paste it and then Explorer closes. Uh, I've got the same result. Oh, you got LED one. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's a lady one. That's all. It wants to be cool. It's cool. Okay. So here's here's the board plugged in, right? I'm going to turn it on. Ignore this one. So the the emulator light will come on. Right. So there's the there's the emulator light. So it says open vault folder to view files. So there's the JLink file right there, which isn't really there, right? It's, it's just emulating this right here. So if I want to make this into a beacon, I'll take this beacon hex file, and I show you how to get it out of the SDK, but you can also just drag and drop it. I let it go. See it copy? This should drop out, come back, and now you see that blinking. It's not the HRS. Oh, that was are the. Are supposed to be using the beacon file because you said good. Well, I just did the beacon because it was at the top of the list. But, but here, you guys were doing the HRS. So there's the HRS. You'll see it copy. Yeah, did that. Ba bunk. Should go ba bunk in a second. Sometimes it doesn't. There. Yeah. But that, I did, it did that in mind, but then the LED1 doesn't blink. If the LED1 doesn't blink, it's not programmed. LED1 doesn't blink, and my Explorer folder closes as well. Yeah, mine does as well. Yeah, Has anybody got it working? <laughs> Nobody can do that. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing the same thing, and it disappears and comes back. It should. Yeah, so it just doesn't do anything. Uh, what is the operating system? There is no operating system. <laughs> well, you're, you're on Windows. Windows 8? 
Windows 8. Okay. Ah, Windows 10. It loads on Windows 10. It's just a drive. It's just a drive. Nobody's getting this to work. I have run this. I have run this with the Kyle's stuff. I've run this with NRF. I mean, we can do this with NRF Go. Um, we can get NRF Go and do this. I mean, we've, we've got the time to make this work with NRF Go. You want to do, go that way? Is nobody look, getting it to work? You want to go look at one of theirs? And well, no, I, you, no, I've got I mine to work. I did. I it shut down my laptop and restarted it. Yeah, it doesn't work. It. Yeah, it, that really one shows. does not. I don't really know. I don't know why that. I just I shut my laptop and <laughs> so started it back. Here's back. one right here. Do you want to try? Right, so, so I'm plugging. All right. Plugging in. So let's see in your uh, uh, Windows Explorer. Here's this. So there's JLink E right there. Watch it, and then it goes away. Let's see part of the appearance from the It's not blink. blink. No. Yeah. <laughs> Should we try the beacon instead, maybe? Try the beacon? Yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. I mean, I just did both, but. Because it's the exact same file. Beacon. Where's the beacon? B O E F, beacon. Oh, no. For a drop and drag the X file into the jail folder right now. Let me try it. Why don't I take, we need to use the one, this two packs, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. We'll see if the difference is. Good idea. It, it shouldn't be the computer, but because there's no driver, no nothing here. Yeah. What about how fast it starts back up again? Um, you should be able to just unplug it. All right, so. The sport's not working. Hang on. Is it uncushioned to say I got it to work on a Mac? I should just work. It and it worked like a champ. How'd you erase it? I used NRF Go to erase it. Okay. So this is running. What you can do is grab me a handful of boards and I can just quick erase them. And it's, uh, it's not a K chart. Can we download that tool to erase it? You could. You could just you could just go to our website and get NRF Go. Okay. And then uh, um, so it's it's NRF Go Studio. Or just do a search for NRF Go and you should find it. Yep, that's it. All right. Thank you. Oh, no, it didn't do it. So, you can't program it? <laughs> and then it um, it's back to the same behavior. It looked like it was going to stick. <laughs> oh, actually, no, it, it is blinking, but the file went away. Yeah, that's Well, yeah, it, okay. there's, there's, no, there's no file system running there. It's, okay. So, yeah, it's working. Now I am, I'm updating the firmware on the, the on the part too. Maybe that has a factor here. It's not like it's our fault. You got that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It looks and like this, it doesn't use the. And this, and see if see if you can make that one work. And if you want to hand me, 
into your board, so I'll, I'll erase what I can unless you want to grab it. Yeah, I want to grab it. I'm going to install this. All right. Well, Except Pokemon Go is dead. My kids tell me that. That is so old. Somebody should tell yeah, me. Yeah, it's already what? Three months old. Somebody so. should tell my wife that. Yeah. <laughs> she told my dad that. <laughs> so, so here's the. He's uh, sixty. All right, so, so here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the board and plugging it in, and I'm going to ignore the autoplay, and I'll run NRF Go Studio, and that is the board that's connected right there. So I'll tell it to connect to that when it says it wants a new firmware on the emulator. Maybe that's got an effect here. Maybe these boards are, have not been updated or something. So I'll update this, and it pops up automatically. And usually NRF Go will crash right here when it does that. Yep. Because <laughs> it lost connection to the uh, it lost connection to the emulator. It's a feature. So you run it again, right? Reconnect and see right here where it says erase all. Just click that. It takes a few seconds. Now the whole part is erased. Is NRF Go just a set of tools? It's a tool. Okay. What if it's not detecting the Unplug and replug that. Yeah, it like burst. And it crashes. Oh wow, it's operating a lot better. It's a firmware update? Oh yeah. It's Is it it? No, probably, yeah. Anybody else want me to, to erase the board? Or right. want to grab them? So I, can't, I can't get one of our guys to erase it. Erase it. I mean, it could just be the emulator uh, firmware, for all I know. Because I fixed that one. My NRF Go did not crash. Really? It's always crashed for me. You got it. Well, you may got the may have the latest version. Anybody that doesn't have their that doesn't have their, you like you guys? Do you want me to erase your boards for you? Yeah, I just did that. Yeah. It is in the board. Will you be able to rename the name of the board? No, receiving the same names. No, you would have to. You would have to reprogram the hardware. The the stack name in the code. Okay. I'd have to go in and reprogram the application. <laughs> and so the name is part of the expected. It's part of the application. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's not even part of the it's in it's in the application code itself. You can configure the stack. That's okay. that's where the name is. And you can program the device through NRF go as well. You can do the X file. Yes. Okay. Now if you do it with NRF Go what you have to do is you have to go find the soft device. And that's in the SDK. If you open up the SDK, you'll see soft device, bump, 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 it goes down to, to hex. And you'll see the S132 soft device. You have to go to the tab and program the soft device. Then you can program the individual application. Or you can take the, mer there's, there's a half a dozen ways to do everything. I see what you're saying. Or you can take the merged file and program it as an application. Because it'll do every part of the chip. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the IDEs that you mentioned, I believe it was IAR, was one of them. IAR, Kyle, and GCC. What are the developer licenses running for those? Uh, Kyle's around 35. Um, uh, IAR's at least 38. GCC is free if you've got the time, if you don't count your own time getting it to work. <laughs> So did anybody now get the uh, 
the heart rate. Yeah. 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 Hey, lesson learned here, huh? Yeah. So, so people have the heart rate working yeah. and on their phone? Is there a way to see what our actual MAC address is so we can figure out which one of ours is on the list? Your heart rate's 300? It is. Yes. I'm jamming. <laughs> 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 so this is all I'm is great. <laughs> recently, but, but for the time being, so the best way is to just do no, the one be. that's the closest. We don't, we don't have and then a star it. Or iOS one. You can touch the far left Sorry. and star it. Or we're can I do yours? Okay. Yeah, you can. And then it will remember. Which one did you want? We have heart rate monitors up right now. I have some scanner. That's. The highest thing goes on the top, right? Heart rate monitor. It's a terrible heart rate, but... Uh, yeah, we work for it. Now listen, listen. But what I see... That's in Norway, that's metric. Yeah. <laughs> it's a metric heart rate. What I see a lot of people doing, right, instead of... There's, there's, a, there's a list of approved profiles. And the, the BLE profile just is a list of uh, characteristics and services. Right, so a characteristic might be the, the heart rate and the services, the, the, the number of beats per minute, and the finger placement, and then it's finger, head, heart, whatever it is, right? So what a lot of people will do is they'll just bastardize the existing profile and connect as whatever and send over that profile instead of doing their own. Other people will take the UART profile and transfer up a block of their code, uh, of their of their data, and do the, the splitting it apart on the other side. Either of these ways is perfectly, perfectly valid. The BLE way is probably the best way. It's the most robust way to do it. The final way is you look at what you've got. It doesn't fit with any of the existing. You go, I need to do my own customized profile. This is not very difficult, right? You're basically just listing what you need to send and how it's going to be sent, right? what format and, and the rest of it. It's, it's basically just a table of a structure of attributes. You can go look at the, uh, at the Bluetooth SIG website and there's Bluetooth Developer Studio and it will help you create a custom profile if you want to. It's very straightforward. The, the, peripheral, the peripheral comes up and it says, hey, I'm a so-and-so. And, -so. and the, the central goes, I don't know what that is. You know, tell me, once he said, the first thing he says is, is uh, let's connect. The peripheral says, let's connect. And I want to talk like this. And the central goes, oh, no, you're going to talk like this. So, like, like um, you might have the thing saying, I want to be at seven and a half milliseconds, and I want to talk to you that fast. And the iPhone goes, nope, 10 is the fastest I'll do. So it hands down the characteristics that the, the central says, these are the characteristics of the connection link. So now we set up a connection. And now you, as the peripheral, tell me what you're going to send me. And this is part of the negotiation in the stack. And the stack comes back and says, you know, here's the characteristics that if, if it's an existing profile, it's easy to send it. If it's, a, if it's a custom, it has to know all these other pieces. And those pieces get sent. You put them in the right place. And it gets sent back over. And now we start communicating. <coughs> And now you have heart rate over here and heart rate over here. You don't have block of data over here and block of data that you'd have with a UR. Or heart rate representing rotational speed. People do that. They do it all the time. They want to get it done. Get it done. That's fine. So I looked at it a few months ago, maybe half a year ago. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything about what, like what you just described. Um, I didn't see the Bluetooth Developer Studio or anything that. Is that new? No. No. Um, we, have, we have, if you get on our, our site in the Info Center, there's some introductions. Getting yeah. started with BLE type stuff will route you off to that, to that kind of stuff. I was looking at, what are they called, GAT profiles? Yeah. yeah. They, like, they've got some really obscure ones, yeah. and then some that you think they should have that you just can't Don't find. Don't find. Yeah. You are. And then isn't in there. They wanted you to like, create an account just to view the list. Yeah, but you can look on our info center and see the list. There's a it's, it's really not as long as it should be. Yeah. What does it take to get on that list? Because it, it looks like some big name players who were doing some really niche things got their 
really weird things on that list, and then other common things don't make it. So, I, I it's, it's got to go through the whole ratification process with the Bluetooth SIG, and they got to think it's necessary to include. You know that that those attributes now get inside every stack that gets sent out, and and unless you're selling a hundred million, you probably yeah. won't. Right. right. That's why there's some obscure ones and then right. things yeah. because they were selling a hundred million of whatever minute of your heart. And that's but that's the sync for you, that's not us. What is the Internet of Things? Is it hardware, software, or both? Well, chances are you already have it in your pocket. It might be on your wrist. Recently popular are fitness bands with accelerometers and gyroscopes to monitor our activities and heart rate. Now we have smartwatches which do all of that, play music, and they can answer messages. Smartphones and tablets have replaced maps, secretaries, alarm clocks, entertainment, and now they can control our homes, change the TV, the temperature, security, and lights all from your device. Our cars are even getting smarter with sensors to keep us safe. The Internet of Things is simply using technology to mimic the human experience and simplify life.